bought this from the mall the other day for church. Got to throw this on, throw a pair of jeans on, nice Ferragamo, and then I'm going to head to church. I got my Ferragamos on, rocking the Roly, nice pair of jeans. I think it's appropriate for uh, Corona Church, COVID Church, whatever you want to call it. I haven't been here in a minute. How funny when you're here before the pasta. I'm the worstest person in the world to follow schedules because I really go for it. Like someone says six o'clock sharp, I'm there six o'clock sharp. Nobody else except me. <gasps> is that Han Solo? You want Paige? Paige is over there. But you can go outside. <laughs> it's a little awkward because I'm here too early. David, what time does your watch say? What? What time does your watch say? Is it 6.15 yet? <laughs> so I'm at church with all these guys. We're hanging out. We're cracking up. Uh, like I was telling you guys when I was outside, when I was making uh, fun of this church. <laughs> I'm here and it's like 6.30 almost and yeah, I, yeah. I should have went 8, got a party, then came here. Where are you going to party at 6.30? Uh, South Beach has a pool party, go, goes on 24 hours a day. Oh yeah, almost. Michael, I think it's time for an MF moment. No, I'm good. <laughs> but I know in Jesus' name that it's going to change very soon. But we thank the Lord because we're healthy, we're whole, we're blessed. And thank the Lord because we're able to be in church today to give Him glory. Amen. Amen. So let's give God glory for that. Amen. Amen. I worship you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lately, it's been scary. A lot of people have been scared, but still, one of the safest places we can be is in God's presence. If it's Amen. in church or out of church. I'm reading Psalms 23, verse 6. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God bless you guys. God bless you, Richard. Give God some glory. I know, uh, and I could be wrong, there's only one of the positions I know that Jesus shares with us. And you might say, what do you mean, Pastor? Uh, a lot of times we, I could share my position of the church with a pastor, assistant pastor, or, or choir director, an assistant choir director, but Jesus himself shares his position with the body of the believers. And you might say, Pastor, what it is. Well, let's find out what it is. Uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. And Dixomoto of Jesus, Dixomoto. You are the light of the world. 
a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Uh, Jesus is actually referred to as the light uh, in John and many other chapters. And here he calls us the light as well. Say amen if you're, amen. If you're following along. Amen. Say amen if you're following amen. along. I don't like a quiet church. You guys know that. So when you agree to it, you say amen. If you want to give God glory, you give God glory. Amen. If you're listening to this word and when you say amen, it means that I agree to it. If you feel that it's false, then don't agree to it. But if you know it's the word of God, then you agree to it. Amen. Someone will say, we are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. Look to your neighbor and say, uncle, you are the light of the world. Amen. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. And today, if I had to uh, title this message, I would title it this. Keep your light on. And over here in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, it, it shows something that is very serious. And it says this, You are the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. Uh, I believe you came up and you, and you said, uh, uh, you gave me confirmation in, in your prayer. Uh, meaning this, uh, I had the opportunity to be in Israel. I had the opportunity. For God's glory. And in Israel, especially back then, they didn't have street lights. They didn't have street lights. They didn't have electricity in Jesus' days. You couldn't just go and just turn on lights or whatever, whatever. But back then, you would know where's the city at because they would have light bowls on top of the four corners. Or they would have a lighthouse, especially for the travelers. Say amen if you're following along. Because people would travel hundreds of miles away, not by car, not by train, not by a plane, but walking. And if a person would walk at night, there would only be one thing that would guide him to the city he needs to be, was the light of the city. So Jesus is referring us to the light of the city. You might, what do you mean by this? Where am I going? Well, there's people today in darkness spiritually. And today they're wandering in the darkness. Today they're wandering in a desert. Today they're wandering in a valley. They're wandering in a place where there's no light. Baltimore, America. <laughs> if these people are in the dark spiritually, then Jesus is telling us here, then you're their place of hope. You're the place of refuge. You're the place where people are going to follow. You're the person that people are going to see when they're lost. When the people are in darkness. When the people are drifting away. They're going to see the light in your house. And where are you going to draw them in? You're going to draw them to safety. Someone say amen. It's okay. Today you can get your light back through Jesus. I hate walking out of church early. But it's late already. It's 7.50 and Rooney starts at 8 o'clock. So I got to jump on 95 and try to make it to church without missing too much. Because they're only allowed to have church there for like an hour or something. Over here they could have church three hours, don't matter. But Rooney's church can only have like an hour service or something. So on my way there.
Pazdi čo glasaj, pendevla, lugodic tu. But if I were more told, we could come back now in worship and praise and thanksgiving and put all our requests in front of God and he'll do everything. He'll take care of your problem and my problem. We need to come back at the Motasta Hill help me. I can't do it apart from you. Forgive me for all my sins. Forgive me for my wrongs. And you know what will happen? God will come and he'll start to sing over you. I want to go to our first scripture that's found in Ecclesiastic 10 and 10. You guys there? Good, I'm not. If the axe, to it, if the axe is dull, nice sharp, can do nothing. And its edge, unsharpened, more strength is needed, but skill will bring success. We need to sharpen our faith. We need to sharpen our worship. We need to sharpen our thanksgiving to God. Because we're here, we're thanking God, we're praising the Lord. God is going to do the rest. When you start to sharpen your soul and the word of the devilist, you know what happens? God will start to sing over you because you're having success. Not only in the words, but in front of God. And he'll come at Garopeski Buchi and at your tribe. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. And he will rejoice over you with singing. Hallelujah. What a beautiful scripture. And this was all done for you. What a wonderful and awesome God we serve. He's going to sing over your children and your grandchildren and over you, over me, the Garaz of Divileski Buchi. When we do the right thing, he's singing over us 
where two or three are gathered in my name, here am I in the midst of every single one of you. So God is here, not only watching, but God is here to do what is right in front of you. Will be one. Donald, how do you feel with your soul? Pastor, to say what used to be a whole family, just had a call to little some old little end on always at the Kibuli. I didn't get to take my communion at Pastor Jesus David, so it was taking God. them too long, and I ran out of church, so I left my communion on the chair. So I got this one now. Can't get rid of you. Huh? Since two days, can't get rid of you. You'll never will. Straight to beef eaters. Not my jazz. So Bobby said she wants to eat cereal. So I'm fixing her some cereal right now. I have three slices, slices, and my Eat your food, enjoy. I love you. You okay, Taylor? I love you. So I saw the kids eating these earlier, and like I've been dying for one since all day. I'm not lying. You. you guys think it's bad if I just eat one for two cookies? It's 160 calories, so it's 80 calories a cookie. You guys think that's bad if I just eat one? I cut out soda. I cut out everything else. No bread. No rice. No potatoes. I think it's bad if I have just one cookie. Some water. God answers prayers. Look how fast, church. Look how fast.